Hey everybody, I am going to talk about how to contribute to Angular formally with test coverage. So I've uh, created this new script just now called test coverage. All that it does is it sets the coverage and variable, uh, environment variable to true and the node env to test and then we run karma start and that will get everything up and running. So if we just run npm run test coverage. Now if uh, if you run this on Windows, if you run exactly this, it's going to blow up at you, but I'm, I'm working on, um, or, or at, somebody's helping uh, me to make these scripts work cross-platform. So anyway, what this is going to do is it's going to pop up Firefox, run the tests, and it'll give you um, just a, a text summary of the uh, test coverage. And every time you make a change, so if I change at a line here, um, then it should rebuild. Where am I? Oh, um, not that file. Pretty much anywhere else. <laughs> um, so I'll save that. It's invalid and it runs and then it gives me this summary. So um, let's, uh, I'll, I'll show an example of uh, changing test coverage. So if I go into the source directory um, under providers and we'll do formally config.test. So we've got a handful of tests in here. Um, if I were to skip this uh, top level test, now formally config has not a whole lot, whoa, not a whole lot of uh, test coverage anymore, and so the branches uh, have declined. So, anyway, that is um, showing uh, test coverage, but uh, when you're actually writing and trying to increase test coverage, it's nice to know where or what is being covered. And so, our coverage reporter using Karma will generate this coverage uh, file that you have here. Um, and so, yeah, if you, um, whoops, if you open up that, you will notice in here there's an lcov report um, file or directory, and inside of there there's an index.html. And in WebStorm, it um, hosts my files using a static uh, file server, but if you're not using WebStorm, uh, you can very simply npm install uh, g http server. And once you have that installed, you'll just do http server and uh, we'll do coverage and so now I have my coverage actually I want uh, the LCOV report um, directory so now the coverage LCOV report directory is being served up on localhost 8080 so if I go to localhost 8080 now I see my coverage report and I can go um, angular fix uh, don't be bothered by this uh, because uh, right now with our test coverage, Istanbul ignore next is not quite working. So don't worry about stuff like this. This is one case uh, that we're not going to uh, cover. So, uh, but you could go into directives and formally focus, for example, has no tests at all. And so um, look at how the other um, tests are brought into the project and, and I would write a test for that one. Um, and here's custom form validation also and uh, formally form there's a, a case where this isn't getting uh, used or um, like we're not testing with an angular version less than three so don't worry about that one but uh, here if scope options form state then we're going to uh, watch that and so like we could write a test case for that um, just look for cases or for code that's not being run. So we're setting up watchers on a field here. It looks like we have no tests um, that, or, or no case that tests whether a um, the field has a watcher. So you could write a test case for a formally form where a field has a watcher and then you get some code coverage on here. And this would help um, you understand the code base as well as um, increasing the code coverage of Angular formally. So, um, yeah, uh, if there are a couple other videos that explain how to contribute to Angular formally, I recommend you watch those. And uh, thank you for your interest in um, helping develop Angular formally. So I just realized that I explained um, a bunch of test co coverage stuff, but I didn't actually explain a good way to write tests So um, or, or some of the utilities that we have. So let me just quickly explain that. Um, so inside of the source directory, it, like all of our tests live right next to the thing that they're testing. So you have formally custom validation and then a formally custom validation.test. And so there's a dot, dot test file for 
um, almost everything. Um, and so that is how like you or, or where the tests go is right next to the thing that it's testing. And then we have this test.utils.js file uh, under source. And this um, has a, a couple of useful things that uh, we use in most of our um, most of our tests. Uh, all of the code is in ES6, and um, so that's important to know as well. And um, let's take a look at the formally field tests. This file is um, 1,200 lines long right now. Um, it's pretty pretty significant. So one thing that um, I recommend looking at is um, some of the other tests and how they work, and, and definitely look at the higher level before each. So you have like we're we're creating our module formally, um, and we are giving you a compile a scope formally config a dollar q and timeout, and then at the very bottom you'll see a couple helper methods. So should not warn, should warn, um, get fee like. Uh, compile and digest, and that will set the L. Um, it uh, sets a node variable that you can use in your test, a field variable, and an isolate scope variable. Um, also, like with compile and digest, you can pass in a template, and that defaults to the basic form. So most of the time, you probably won't need to actually specify anything. It's uh, just like right here. I don't need to specify anything. You can also pass in a, a context. So if you want to compile it on a different scope, you can do that. Um, and so not all files are exactly the same. Not all files have the same utilities. And so you like, look at the very bottom to see uh, the utilities that you have access to in, in that file or write your own. Um, and yeah. Anyway, thank you for helping contribute to the project.